So uh, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, resource types. I guess most of you, if not all of you, already know what is resource type, and I'm not going to into details on the basic stuff. Uh, I just mentioned that resource type, actually every every record on Primo should have, and it's a mandatory uh, to have a, a resource type. Uh, the most common resource type, as you may know, are books, articles, journals, and so on. Um, on every slide on this presentation, uh, the presentation is built in a way that uh, the, there is a question, and then I'm going to answer this question. Every question has a direct link to an article on, a, on our knowledge center that you can uh, you can you can go to it after. I don't know if you want to work on this question afterwards. In the future, you can uh, you can go to the presentation and then go to the link on the knowledge center. Uh, of course, uh, our recorded session of a recorded session will be sent to you afterwards, and also the presentation. And I think we are ready to start. As Audrey mentioned before, if you have any question uh, during the session, uh, you can ask in the chat, and I will address those questions in in the end. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> okay, so the first question is. How to add, this is the, the very basic uh, question, is how to add a searchable resource type. Primo has uh, out, of the, out of the box a few resource types, a few common resource types, such as books, articles, journals, and some other more. But let's assume that you want to add your, uh, your new uh, resource type to, to Primo and to be able to search by, 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 by this new by this uh, resource type. Resource type. Sorry, I'm hearing myself. If everyone can mute themselves, please. Thank you. So let's go. Here you can see the answer. Uh, let's go to the link. It will be more easier. Just a second. So here is the article on what needs to be done uh, in order to add a new uh, searchable resource type. As you can see, there are uh, quite uh, not so few places that need to be changed and to be defined. Uh, I'm not going to, to demonstrate every step on this flow, but this is a very structural flow, and if you will follow this instruction, you will, you will be able to, to add a new uh, resource type. I will I will uh, mention that uh, the places that need to be updated is, is of course the normalization rules. Uh, there you you need to to mention uh, how how to build how Primo should identify the the new uh, the new resource type, and of course you have a few uh, mapping table in the static facet section that need to be updated with this new uh, resource type, uh, and of course a few uh, code tables. Uh, <clears throat> after you will update the normalization rules and, and all the mapping tables and the code tables, and uh, here I, I want to mention that it's very important to keep the, the, the case the same way the case uh, of the, if you use ebooks with a lower case, you should be very consistent with it and not suddenly do, do it on upper case, so Primo won't uh, want to identify that they are belong to each other. So after you update the normalization rules, the, the mapping table and the code table, the relevant code table, you, you need, of course, to deploy all the mapping and code tables. And uh, of course, you will have to, to run a no harvest pipe or what we call update pipe in order to, to all the relevant uh, records on Primo to be updated with this new uh, resource type. And, and of course, after you will do, after you will execute uh, the update pipe, you will have to wait, if you are a multi-tenant customer, you will have to wait to the next hot swap. Or if you are, if you are not on the multi-tenant, you will have to execute index and hot swap in order to, those, to these files to be updated and 
in order to make them searchable. Uh, <clears throat> assuming that you also wanted to, to add a new icon for this new resource type, you will also need to go to the to to your uh, to your local CSS file and add a new uh, a new class with the, this uh, syntax that will point to the. Of course, you will also need to to bring a new JPEG image file with your new icon and to to add this to the CSS to point to this new icon. And if you will follow this instruction you should be able to add a new uh, resource type to, to Primo. Uh, regarding the, the icon, I will, I will show you later on on this session uh, how, how, to, how to do it in the new UI, which is a more simpler and more uh, friendly way to, to add a new icon. Okay, so let's go to the presentation. So this is how you will add a, a new searchable resource type. Okay, so the next the next question is how to separate a material type facet into more than one volume. And what I mean he here, let's let's see it. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we have maybe okay. This is an example. Let's do a refresh. You can see here, for example, that there is a resource type in the facet section that's called audiovisual. Okay, if I will click on it, you can see that this audiovisual category are basically not just one resource type, but few. In this example, it, it contains the audio CD and also the video CD. So let's, and uh, if I want, if you want, to, to make the, the resource type facet uh, more uh, to, into more details that uh, that the user that student can can see in the, in the resource type facet video separately and audio separately this is what you need to be do need to do. okay let's see uh, example on the PNX okay you can see this in the PNX on the display section that this record, the type is audio. But if we go to the facet section, facet section over here, the resource type is media. And in this example, you can see that the type is video. And I'm sure you can guess that if I will go to the facet section, you will see the resource type, where is it? Over here is also media. So in order to, to separate them to different kinds, to different values, this is the field that we want to, to change. So I guess you already know what needs to be done, but let's, let's look on it. Uh, <clears throat> no, not this, this one. So you will have to go to, uh, to a mapping table that's called uh, format mean on the normalization. Uh, let's open, for example, this back office. Okay, let's find the mapping table format. Format mean. Okay, and here you can see that if I filter it to media, there are two entries, video and audio, that be that being mapped to the same category, media. So, as you as you saw on the article, if I want to to change it, I just need to to map video to video and audio, very surprisingly, to audio. This is one place that I need to do it. The, the next place that I need to do it, it it's on the static facet, uh, static facet, and the static facet resource type values. And here I need to map the row with media 
to media, sorry, to disable the mapping role with the media to media and create new two new rows that uh, audio will be mapped to audio and video to audio, to video, sorry. And after I will do that, I will go over here, sorry, let's and you can see that there is a button, a button outside of the mapping table that called sync. Once I will click it, this new row that I just added is, is be, will be populated in the relevant code table. Okay. And of course, after I will do this, the same as before, I will have to deploy, of course, and to run an update pipe record, update pipe that will uh, update the new record with this new facet section. And of course, I will also have to wait for the next hot swapping and indexing. This about it. Let's go back to the presentation. And let's go to uh, the next question. Okay, the next question is how to exclude display types of formats from DDoP or Ferber. So, uh, if I will explain the question, is it uh, referring to if I want that a uh, specific resource type won't be, uh, I, I hope everyone knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking about DDoP or Ferber. Uh, basically, Primo uh, group together a uh, uh, few records. Uh, I won't go into details, but he grouped a few records together. And, and uh, what we want to achieve is to exclude a, a specific resource type from being grouped together by DDoP or by Ferber. For example, I don't want the resource type of kind map. I don't want it to be uh, grouped together by DDoP or by Ferber. I want it to, to stay alone, to stay as a separate record on Primo. So how to achieve it? Again, there is an article. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> sorry, I, want, I wanted the second one. I will I will throw it on the Ferber, but it's really the same thing for for DDoP. Okay, what needs to be done here is to go to uh, to the Ferber section of the PNX, and over there there is a field that called the uh, that called field uh, T Ferber T. Let's see if we still have the PNX open. Okay. This is uh, the PNX. You can see on the DDoP section there is a field T, and also on the Ferber there is a field T. So what we want to do is to, to in the cases that, for example, in the example that I just mentioned, if the resource type is map, I want I want Primo to uh, enter in 99. If the field T will be equal to 99, Primo will know not to DDoP or not to Ferber this record and leave it alone. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, as you can see in the article, I need to go to the normalization. I will I will show you quickly how it looks. I bet most of you already know. Okay, I'm going to the Ferber, 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 over here. Here, here is the Ferber field T, and if I will go here, of course I will need to to build a condition how to identify which which record is below is map, the resource type is map, and then I will uh, will enter a constraint of 99, okay. And of course, I've, after I will build the normalization as I want, again I will have to to run a to run a pipe, and it's very important to on the pipe configuration to to check the checkbox that call, that says force Ferber. That will uh, that will force the Primo to 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 build again the Ferber uh, groups and and not to include the Fer the resource type that we don't want to to be included. And of course, after I I I'm running the pipe, 
And of course, as before, I have to wait for, for the next in, index and hot swap to be completed. And then I will show this, uh, I, will see, I will see how it works. This method uh, is, is also relevant for other, other parts of Primo if, if you don't want uh, if you don't, if you want some other condition for, uh, to prevent it from being DDoS or Ferber, not resource type. I don't know. For example, uh, for some reason you want uh, every I don't know uh, every book that belongs to a specific author or something like this. For uh, you want it to be not to be DDoS or Ferber, you can use this uh, logic. Uh, on the same way that I, I just uh, show you. It's not only specific for a resource type. <coughs> okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, the, the next and the, actually the last question that I want to, to talk about is, uh, I mentioned it before, is how to uh, add or change new icons on the Prima new UI. Uh, I guess most of you, all of you heard in the past year or maybe less about the Prima new UI and uh, how it looks and I want to, to use this opportunity to show you a bit how to work with the new UI regarding the, uh, the, the icon of, of new resource type and, and also with other stuff. We have on the on the knowledge center. We have a we have a page of of new Primo interface with all with all kind of documentation, and most importantly, we have a page that's called new new UI customization best practices. On this page, you will have a, all kind of a, a short and specific and uh, and very uh, very clear uh, instruction on how to use the the new UI, uh, the basic use, and after a, a few uh, more advanced setup that can be done, CSS the things that can be done, and uh, how to change the logo and how to make your logo clickable and uh, how to change how to change resource type and so on. This page is very important. This page is being updated on a weekly basis. So uh, as, we, as we go with the adoption of the new UI, we get feedback from customers and we added here some, some of the customers' feedback and some, some other things that we, we, we thought that can be helpful for you, for you to move to the new UI. So this is a very important page that I, I think you, you can benefit from from knowing this page. Okay, let's go back to what we talked about, how to change the icon on the, on the new UI. So if I will go here, let me just close this window, this window, this window, and also this window. Okay, so uh, this is how new UI looks out of the box. We didn't, I didn't change anything here. Uh, okay, you can see here there are uh, out of the box icons for journal and uh, if I will go down you will see also the out of the box icon I hope for books and so on. So let's assume that I want to, to change to change the icons of the journal and for the book. Okay, so what I'm going to do I have to go I will go to my back office for my customization, oh, sorry, session timeout. Okay, I will go to the customization. Of course, you will see your institution and also all of this non-relevant institution, okay. And then I will go to the customization manager to the view that I want to change and I will download my, the template package, okay. I'm downloading, I'm downloading the, this package that is being downloaded as a zip. Uh, and if I will open it, I will see a library. And if I will open this library, I will see a few sub libraries such as CSS. Here I can add, uh, I can edit the CSS with all my changes in an HTML directory. 
and most relevant for our uh, case is it's the image folder. If I will go to the image folder, I will be able to add uh, some, some other resource type uh, uh, icons and also a new library logo if I want. Uh, I need, of course, to to use a specific syntax as here that the file should be called the uh, icon underscore and the resource type that uh, that I want to change. For example, books dot png. The files need to be in PNG format. Uh, <clears throat> and after I will do this, I will have, I'm, I'm made in advance. You can see here, I already put uh, a new logo and a new, and two new uh, icons for book and for journals. And uh, I need to I need to to the main library to be called the same as our, the same as my uh, view code, and if I will zip it, where is it? Okay, now I will have a zip file <coughs> over here, and, and of course I need to upload it back to the system. This is something that I'm doing here. I'm searching for my zip file over here. And then I click Upload. So it should take a few seconds. OK. And of course, I need to deploy. That maybe take more than a few seconds. And in the meantime, you can see that on the best practices page, all that all the things that I just do are here with a well-structured instruction that you can follow and see exactly what I did. And in here you can see how to change the icon and how the the library logo should be should be put uh, and some other stuff. Let's see if the deploy ended. Okay, the deploy ended. I will go to the new UI and hopefully after I will refresh the page. Okay, you can see the logo that's not looking so good, but I'm not a graphic designer or something. And you can see that our new icons, okay, for journal this uh, this icon and and if we scroll a bit down, okay, you can see the icon for the books. So as you can see, it's very simple. Uh, not like on, like not like on the classic UI when you have to edit your local CSS file and to put a file somewhere and and to point to this file. This is very very simple. Uh, I may I took some example of, from Sussex University. You can see over there they also change the icons. Wait a second or two. You can see here that they change the icons to be B for books and A for article and so on. So you really have the freedom and to be a, as creative as you want. Uh, that's basically the presentation. I just want to mention that um, if you want to to start working with a new yeah. UI, or, or even if you already start yeah. and then you you have some difficulties on some question, you always uh, welcome to raise a, a case to support and and ask for help because we are very want we are very very it's very important to us to help you to to move to the new UI as smooth as possible and uh, that's all. So let's see if you have any other questions. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay, so thank you everyone. It was a pleasure and I hope you will join us on our, on our future uh, sessions regarding new UI and regarding other subjects as well. And have a rest of the day, have a good rest of the day and I will go home now. Thank you very much.
Thanks very much, Amitai. Thanks, everybody.